Welcome to Ensuring Your Students Have What They Need, Incorporating Library Resources in Canvas. My name is Natalie Haber, and I'm one of our research and instruction librarians, and I'm joined with... Charlie Remy. I'm the Electronic Resources and Serials Librarian. So if you have any questions about any of the content we go over, feel free to email the library. We'll put the email address up at the end, but it's just library at utc.edu. So the agenda for this little workshop is just um, to discuss the importance of linking, of um, permalinks, what are they, how do I find a permalink. Um, we'll take a look at the library's linking guide with top databases and directions. Um, we'll take a look at what a quick search result looks like on the screen um, and the benefits and drawbacks to linking to that page. Charlie will also discuss the problems of paywalls. So, when we talk about the importance of linking, the biggest thing is that there's no copyright issues, right? So because the library has purchased this, we know that we have access to it. So that's the, the top thing we like to say is, look, there's no copyright issues when you link to the library resources. We always recommend that it's better to link rather than download and upload to your course. Keeping in mind that we pay over a million and a half dollars on electronic resources to support UTC learning. Um, so again, uh, it really does help us when you link because it gives us usage data. And usage data helps us um, decide, you know, how much to spend on things, how much, it, it gives us an idea of how many people are using certain resources, right? And again, if you were to just download one PDF of an article and upload it, we'll see that it was used once. But if your whole class was accessing it, we'll see all 30 of your students hitting that link, right? So that usage data is actually really useful as we make decisions with our collections. Beyond that, we also teach the library databases to your students right in their freshman year and then again in their research methods classes. So seeing those interfaces on a regular basis helps, helps boost those skills in your students. Online library content is available 24 seven with UTC ID and password on or off campus, which obviously people aren't on campus right this minute. And it also does protect student privacy and removes the hassle of creating extra accounts for, um, you know, publications that make you create a uh, subscribe and create a, accounts. So permalinks, what are they and why are they important? Basically, the permalink ensures that the links are authenticated and will work for your students on campus or off campus. And they also should work um, beyond whatever session the student is in. Right, Charlie? Yep, yep. I mean, nothing is ever 100% per permanent, but it does uh, increase the reliability uh, in the future that you'll be able to access what you need, particularly if you have it on a syllabus or in Canvas. Yeah, and, and the big thing too about the authentication, I mean, you won't see every URL uh, with, with a proxy prefix, but it's the way that it comes back behind our paywalls, the things that we're paying for. So essentially the difference is that um, in the top bar, uh, there's a long URL that isn't always the stable URL or the permanent URL. Instead, what you want to do on whatever interface you're using is look for something called a permalink or a stable URL or a permanent link. Um, sometimes we might see it being called a document URL. Once you grab that link, you can embed it into a Canvas page or a Canvas uh, module, whichever one you decide to go with. Um, and we always recommend that you test it. So follow these steps right here on the screen. You want to open a browser that you don't regularly use. Um, that means that you won't have your passwords and history saved. So if you're always using Google Chrome, um, maybe switch to Mozilla Firefox and test the link there. Make sure that it takes you to the UTC ID and password login page. Log in, make sure the article comes up the way you want it to. If you have to test more than one link, clear your history and cache in between each uh, link that you're testing. You can also feel free to just email us the link and we'll do the test for you um, if that would be easier for you. I'd also suggest that you um, 
test all the links in your syllabi and in Canvas uh, at the beginning of the semester just to make sure if you're reusing them from previous semesters. Um, publishers change, platforms change, so it's just good to proactively check them all before at the beginning of the semester uh, and fix anything. And as Natalie said, uh, you can email us if you're uh, encountering any problems. Exactly. All right, so I'm going to go ahead. The next piece here is all about the linking guide. So we made a guide and I'm going to navigate to it on the website here. So from the library's homepage, if I were to click services and then faculty and staff, this page, will, this page is on the uh, left hand side. Um, so Again, this page just goes over a lot of the same information we just discussed, why you should link and not download and upload, um, some general tips about where the URL might be or what it might be called, depending on which database you're accessing. Um, you'll also notice that a, quite a lot of these permalinks will have our proxy URL. Our proxy URL is listed right here. It's proxy.lib.utc.edu. Oftentimes, you'll see that proxy somewhere within the correct link. Um, so you can see there's specific instructions for different resources, including how to add a link into your, your Canvas page, how to update a link, um, how to use the quick search links. I'm going to show you just our top three database uh, interfaces, which would be EBSCO, JSTOR, and ProQuest, but certainly there's other ones here. And if you have any other questions about something specific that you're trying to use, just let us know. If I click on the EBSCO, and I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on my page here so you can see it a little bit better. Once you've gotten into the full article details, which means from your result list, you click on the title. You'll see, uh, you know, the PDF to the left hand side, the full article details and abstract. Over on the right, under the toolbox, you'll see a button for permalink. And then up on the top, the permalink will be di um, displayed. Again, you can see right in there, it's got this uh, proxy.lib.utc.edu. Um, right in it, and that's going to force it to go to an authentication page where the student will be able to put their UTC ID and password in. So that's what it looks like in EBSCO. In JSTOR, it's a bit different, um, per perhaps not as easy. Uh, what you'll do is, again, click on the full de uh, details of the article itself, um, so you'll click the title. And then you'll see here um, the journal article titled Jim Crow 2.0, and you can see what journal it was published in. Just beneath that is this thing. It says um, uh, jstore.org.proxy.lib.utc.edu slash stable, right? So that's indicating to me that this is the stable link, um, and you can see our proxy prefix in there. Um, again, it's not super straightforward inside of, um, inside of JSTOR, but you'll copy and paste that link as the link in your Canvas pages. Under ProQuest, ProQuest is even diff another different one, right? So you come in, click the full text uh, details, you'll click on the title and you'll see this page comes up. Often it's going to immediately send you to the full text PDF. What you'll need to do is click the tab that says abstract slash details and scroll all the way down until you see something called the document URL. The document URL is the one that's got that proxy.lib.utc.edu in it. So you'd copy that link into your course. Again, if I were just to take the URL up at the top of the page, there's a very good chance that if you were to embed that link, it'll um, take the students to a, a 404 page not found. So you gotta make sure you get the right link for things. Um, again, if you have questions on it, uh, just let us know and we can either generate those permalinks for you or you can send us the ones you come up with and we'll test them to make sure that they work. One um, exception I wanted to mention um, to the general rule that all permalinks are going to have the proxy.lib.utc.edu in them uh, is ProQuest eBook Central. So we have that set up so that um, users do not have to create individual accounts on there. And as a result, um, any uh, ProQuest eBook URL uh, will not have the proxy in the URL, but it will prompt you to log in with your UTC ID and password if you haven't already. Right, and so again, if you have questions about any of these offshoot platforms or things that you use regularly, just let us know. 
Let me just show you really quick how to grab a link from one of these databases and put it into um, Canvas. So first what I'm gonna do is go from the library's homepage. I'm gonna hit databases button because I wanna open up one of our, our top used databases. I'll go to JSTOR because that one was the one that was a little squirrely. Let me log in. Do a quick search. Buttercup, why not? So let's say I wanted to tell students to read this chapter called Buttercup. Buttercup. <clears throat> Beneath the details here is the stable link. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna come back over here and open up UTC Learn. I'm gonna open up my little sandbox right here. And there's two ways you, that you can do this. I'm just gonna show you how to add it into a page, but you could add it as a module. So under pages, you'll create a new page by just hitting plus here. But I actually already created a page called Practicing Linking to Library Stuff. So we'll just open that page up. I'm gonna edit the page. And now, you can link to a URL. There's a link, insert it, and we can call it whatever we want, right? So we can say, read this. Oh, sorry, it undid my linking. Here we go. Or we could have called it chapter on buttercup, and we'll hit save. So now this page has the link embedded in it. Um, obviously, we could have added quite a lot more text telling the students what to look for in the chapter, or we could add an assignment to it. Um, we could have put this page as part of a module that you've already created. Um, so that's just the basics. The Walker Center absolutely can run you through anything more in depth that you need to do with the links in Canvas. Uh, so I want to just talk about uh, the, the quick search for permalink functionality and why you may want to use it instead of a direct publisher platform link. Um, so um, searching, when I talk about quick search, I mean just searching from the search box on our homepage. It goes to the quick search catalog. Um, and you can link you can use a permalink right from those results. So some of the benefits are more flexibility to accommodate future changes in access. So as I mentioned earlier, um, electronic resources are constantly changing. Things are moving from publisher to publisher, uh, platforms are changing, URL structures change. Um, and so uh, linking to the quick search record like is in this screen um, is, helpful because it is more likely to, uh, I guess, be future-proof, you could say, uh, and accommodate those changes in the future. Um, it, it also reinforces the use of quick search for your students, since that's what they are likely to be using, uh, and it allows them to serendipitously discover some uh, similar content. Um, that some of the drawbacks are that the links can be quite long at times, and sometimes students don't know what to do when they get to this page. So it's helpful to give some explanation in your directions. Um, under view online, click the, click the blue bar link. Um, and then make sure you test it and that you can access the full text of the article under view online. Again, I would try it at the beginning of the semester all your links and make sure that they're linking properly from those records. And if you have any problems, just email us at library.utc.edu uh, and I will uh, look into it and hopefully fix it. If not, if I can't fix it myself, then I can work with the vendor to uh, get it fixed. Um, I want to show you uh, some examples of uh, an example of a, what I would call a good link and a bad link. So um, I'm going to be sharing my screen. This is an example of a bad link. You'll notice uh, right here, and I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. 
uh, you will notice that the URL does not have any proxy.lib.utc.edu, which Natalie and I have been talking about uh, throughout the session. As a result, you s will notice that it says get access and you are now presented with the opportunity to buy this article for $44. Well, the library has paid a lot of money for uh, these resources and we don't want you to be getting uh, paywalls displaying. Um, and so a, uh, a way of avoiding that is to use the good links, which include the proxy prefix. And this is the same exact article from the same journal. And you'll see now that it has a PDF link in green. You click on it and it downloads as a PDF. Um, and so, um, that is a is a practical example um, for you to see the importance of using uh, permalinks with our uh, authentication system uh, in them because your students will not get paywalls. Uh, you will not ri run the risk of them spending spending money that they don't have to spend on these because we've already paid for them. Um, and also, in the past several years, a lot of newspapers and magazines have put paywalls up and they limit their users, you know, people to a certain number in a month and then they'll be um, forced to pay. And so this is a way that you can give your users direct access to the, your students direct access to the full text um, and not have any problems. Um, so I hope that example illustrates that little details do matter. Um, and thank you for watching. And um, again, if you have any questions, just email us at library at utc.edu and we will uh, respond to you. Uh, we hope this is helpful and uh, thanks again.